Hello everyone, welcome to IAS Baba's 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. So today at the day 20, we take up geography again. So some of the Indian river systems and other phenomenon of geography we discuss here. So we start with the Indian Indus regime. So here it is like we are always familiar with the Jhelum, Chinab, Ravi, Bias and Satlej. So here we have the Chinab river which flows and then the Bias, Bias joins Satlej and that will again joins the Chinab. And then the Jhelum and Ravi, so they are flowing and joining the Chinab again. So these all we know. And remember one more fact that Satlej river, it exactly cuts Himachal Pradesh. So it flows through the middle of Himachal Pradesh. And then we forget the rivers which join Indus from the right side. That is the Shayok river that is joining here. The Nubra river is there here and the Gilgit river. And then the Zanskar river we forget. And then Kabul river which comes from Afghanistan. So we have various tributaries of Kabul, then Gomal, Gomal or Gumal river. So they, uh, their tributaries are present here okay, and Tochi river. So all these are present in the NCRT books. So whenever they are present, so they become important and they have to be revised. And then the Zaskar, Suru river, Son river, Jhelum, China, Bravi, Bia, Satlej and all those from the left bank tributaries and then the right bank tributaries, the Shayok, Gilgit, Hanza, then Swat river, Kunar, Kurram, Gomal or Gumal. Kabul rivers. Friends here, whichever rivers we didn't discuss in the map. So this is an assignment. So go through the Google Maps and see and locate all these rivers. Okay. Because Afghanistan is also in current affairs because of the takeover of Taliban. So that is why this becomes important. And then Ganga regime. So Ganga has the Yamuna as one of the major tributaries and then Gomati, Gagra, Gandak, Kosi. So all these. So they are the left tributaries of Ganga. So apart from that, we have Tista also. So then these are the tributaries of Brahmaputra. So they are not the tributaries of Ganga per se. Tista, then we have Manas, then Kameng, then uh, Dibang, Dihang, then Lohit River, then Dansiri River. So all these. Okay. So here remember Barak. Barak is not the tributary of Brahmaputra, neither Ganga. So it flows through uh, Meghalaya and then it enters Bangladesh and later it joins Padma. So Padma is the joint river which has been formed after Ganga and Brahmaputra join. Okay. So here we have so many national parks, wildlife sanctuaries. So starting from Kaziranga, Manas, then Sunai Rupai, then Debru Shekova, then so Orang, so many others. So they are present in this region and most of the national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, they are having with high density, they are located in this place. So we study them and then coming to the central highland. So the Chambal river and then the Banas and then the Kian and Betwa rivers. So all this and Tamsa river is here, Sun or Sone river. So that is located here. Then we also remember Damodar and Hugli. Then coming to some of the facts. So here, whenever Ganga and Yamuna, they arise. Okay. So they will form the mergers and re-mergers. So whenever they form the mergers, so the place of confluence of two rivers, that is called Prayag. So here I have so many Prayags, the Deva Prayag or Dev Prayag. So it is the place of confluence between Bhagirathi and Alaknanda river. Then Rudra Prayag, so here confluence of Mandakini and Alaknananda. So make sure that Rudra Prayag, the man eaters leopard of Rudra Prayag, that is the Jim Corbett story. So from that, this becomes famous. And also the Corbett National Park, that lies somewhere here. Then Nanda Prayag, that is the place of confluence of Nandakini River and Alaknanda River. Then Karna Prayag, so Karna Prayag, Pindar and Alaknananda. Then Vishnu Prayag, so Dauli Ganga or Vishnu Ganga and Alaknananda. So all these, if you locate in map, so that will be easy here. So say for example, but here we have Alaknananda and uh, Dauli Ganga, Alaknananda river. So that is flowing from Badrinath and these two will confluence at Vishnu Prayag. And then we have Nanda Prayag here, Alaknananda and Nandakini rivers. Then Pindar, Pindar, that will form Karna Prayag and Rudra Prayag here and Dev Prayag. So also we need to remember that almost the most of the sacred places of Uttarakhand, Yamunotri, Gangotri, Kedarnath, Badrinath. So they are the birthplaces of various rivers. So Yamunotri, the Yamuna, then Gangotri. So that is Bhagiratis, then Kedarnath, Mandakini. And here we have the Badrinath, which is the birthplace of Alakananda river. Then come to next Ganga regime. So here Alakananda. So NCRT gives a detailed picture of Ganga and Brahmaputra rivers. So here we have some of the birthplaces of the tributaries of Ganga. So first is Alakananda, that is the Satopanth and 
the Bhagirath glaciers in Uttarakhand. So remember these two. That is from Uttarakhand glaciers. It is originating. Then Bhagirathi. It rises at the foot of Gangotri glacier at Gomuk. So remember Gomuk. So we had a Gomuk landslide. A very severe landslide. Some 3 to 4 years back. Then Dauli Ganga. So it is like. It is originating at Vasundara Tal. So Tal means a lake. And then it is the largest glacier lake in Uttarakhand. So remember Vasundara Tal. Then Rishi Ganga River. So here Uttari Nanda Devi glacier on the Nanda Devi mountain. So Rishi Ganga originates at this place. Then Rama Ganga. So here Duda Toli Hill in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. So this is the place where Rama Ganga originates. Then Gomati. So it is Gomat Tal near Philibit, Philibit National Park in UP. Then come to next Gagra. So Gagra it originates from the glaciers of Mopcha Chungo. So remember Mopcha Chungo glacier. Then Gandak formed by union of Kali and Trishuli rivers. So it is not originating. So it is being joined by two rivers and after that Gandaki is formed. So mark this and then Kosi it is formed by Arun then Sun Kosi and Bote Kosi river. Again Kosi will not originate from any one place. So it is formed by the joining of three to four tributaries. So all these tributaries are present in Nepal. Okay, so that is why we don't study in detail in the maps. And then the Sone River or Sun River originates near Amar Kantak. So in MP. So it is from the south it flows northwards. Then Godavari River. So here some of the important tributaries of Godavari River are. So we start from this end. Indravati comes first. And after Indravati, then we have Vain Ganga here. And then after Vain Ganga comes Varda. So remember Varda and Varda Ashram of Mahatma Gandhiji. And then we have Penganga very near to it. And then after Penganga we have Dharna River. So Dharna River flows this way. And then we have the Manjra River. So Manjra River flows this way like this. It forms a curve here. And remember Nizam Sagar Dam. And then the Sri Ram Sagar Dam. So these two are located on the Godavari River. And here Indravati, around Indravati, we have the Indravati Tiger Reserve. So all those we remember here. And then the tributaries. So Banganga, Kadwa, Shivana, Purna, Kadam, Pranahita, Indravati, Taliperu, Sabari and Dharna rivers. And the right tributaries, Nasardi, Pravara, then Sindhfana, Manjira rivers, Manair and Kinerasani. So here you need not locate all those things. So make sure that important ones, whichever we send it in the map. So those if you remember, that is enough. And friends, whenever map work is concerned, UPSC will not specifically ask a map. It will interlink two to three subjects. Say for example, the map and the art and culture. So Ajanta temple located on the bank of which river. So such questions UPSC will ask. So make sure that if you have a good command, so then you can answer such questions very well. Then the some of the facts of Godavari, the basin is bounded by Satmala Hills, Ajanta Range and Mahadev Hills. Okay, so locate on the map these hills and then Rajamundri is the largest city on the bank of Godavari. Okay, then the Shiram Sagar project which was constructed in 1964 to 69, a very historical project. Then Nashik, Trimbakeshwar, then Nanded, Aurangabad, Nagpur, Badrachalam, Nizamabad, Rajamundri, Balagat, then Yanam, then Kovur. So all these are important cities that are located on Godavari rivers. So all these they have their own significance. Say Nasik, Trayambakeshwar, all these they are important for the Linga Kshetras. Okay. So Atma Linga Kshetras, Jyoti Linga Kshetras and others. And then the Nizamabad, Balagat. So all these are the important uh, resourceful cities and the industrial towns. So all these just have a glance over it. So if possible also locate them in the maps also. Then. Krishna river. So Krishna river also has some of the important tributaries. So like we start from here. So this is Vedavati. So Vedavati flows here and then Tunga Badra. So Tunga Badra is flowing this way. So this is Tunga and this is Badra. So they join together to form Tunga Badra river. And then we have Malaprabha rivers. So Malaprabha. So that flows here and then Ghataprabha. So Ghataprabha, Malaprabha. So these are like sister rivers. So they are flowing from Karnataka. Then we have Koina. So Koina has a famous Koina Dam that is located in Maharashtra. Then Bhima River is there, one of the important and the biggest tributaries of Godavari. And here we have some important uh, dams that are constructed. That is Nagarjun Sagar and the Sri Shailam project. Okay. So these are some of the ones and some of the other facts of Krishna River. So Almati Dam, Sri Shailam Dam, Nag Nagarjun Sagar Dam, then Prakasham Barrage. So all these are some of the dams constructed on Krishna river and then some of the important cities are Satra. So Maharashtra history. So that starts from Satra after the start of Peshwas. Then Karad, 
then Sangli, then Bagalkot, then Srishailam and then Amravati, then Vijayawada. So all these are some of the important urban areas. Okay. So if you study all these, you will get a proper command over the maps of Maharashtra, Karnataka and Telangana, Andhra Pradesh. So if you do it, it will be well and good. Then other east flowing rivers. So many uh, rivers have been asked in the map books and give first importance to the map box because every year four to five questions will be there although the resource is very vast but if you have a command over them your eight to ten marks is a granted here so we start from the beginning so hoogle river comes here then comes the damoda river then kasa river kasai river is there and then after that here we have one more that is subarnareka so subarnareka river goes here then brahmani that is going here then baitarani so baitarani comes here and after that we have Mahanadi river. So after Mahanadi we have Vamshadara river. Vamshadara was asked by the UPSC in 2021 prelims. So Mark Chilika lake which is between Mahanadi and Vamshadara. So above Vamshadara we have one more river that is Rushikulya river. So mark that Rushikulya river also. And then comes Godavari and then Krishna river comes here. And then after Krishna we have Penner river or Panneru river and then Palar river and then Ponnayar river. So Ponnayar and Pennar. So they are different ones and then comes Kaveri river and after Kaveri here we have Vaiga river and in the last we have Tamira Barani river. So mark all these things and remember again and again. So they will come on their own. So here the tributaries of the Krishna river is also given beautifully. So we can go through them. Then come to next. So here is a brief picture of Vamshadara river. So Vamshadara river, if you zoom out this map, so you'll get it. So in the Google, if you zoom it out, so you will get the picture. So if any river which is unique, if it is asked by UPSC, do make sure that you will revise it thoroughly because next year, if the same repeats or any other areas nearby, if it repeats, so all others will attempt them. So for you, it will be a difficult question. So avoid such things wherein you will have a negative edge created by your own. So it is like hitting a self goal. So avoid that. Then come to next other east flowing rivers. So here the Palar, Pannayar, then Kaveri and Vaigai and Tamira Barani. So all these we already studied. So this is a zoomed map. So you can use this also. Then west flowing rivers. So we start from here. Badar river. Badar river is flowing here. And then Shetrunjaya or Shetruniji. So this river is flowing to the Gulf of Kambath. And then we have Sabarmati, then Mahi. Mahi takes a curve here. So look at the curve it takes. And then Narmada and Tapi. So we can remember like Samanata. Sabarmati, Mahi, Narmada and Tapi. Samanata. So you can have your own abbreviations here. And then moving southwards. So in Goa and Karnataka. So some two to three rivers they flow. So in Goa we have Zuari and Mondavi rivers. So Zuari, Z-U-A-R-I and Mondavi rivers, they flow near Goa. And as we go downwards, so here we have the Kali Nadi, Kali Nadi flows somewhere here. And then the Jok Falls, Jok Falls is on the Sharavati river. So Sharavati river flows here. And then here we have Netravati river. So Netravati river that flows very near to Kerala, but it is in Karnataka again. And coming to next further southwards. So here we have the Baipur river or Baipore river. And then Periyar river. So this flows in Kerala. So these are some of the west flowing rivers. And these are small ones. And even NCRT will not give the clear picture of all these. So Ganga and Brahmaputra is given in more detail. And as and when we move. So towards the small rivers. So Krishna, Godavari and all others. The details. So that starts reducing. So we have to read on our own. Then the Indian Ocean Dipole. So here. We always study about the El Nino and La Nina in the same context. Indian Ocean Dipole is also worth studying. So here the positive Indian Ocean Dipole means. So here we have the African and other parts. So that will be warmer and there will be having the ascending air. So this ascending air carries moisture and it sheds rainfall here. But at the same time here in the eastern part. So eastern part it gets the descending air. So that will uh, give a dry descending air and thereby it forms a cool dry season there. Okay. So when this circle is going on here we will be having the dryness and here we will be having wetness. So compare the same with the Elino and Lanina. So here if there is a dryness here at this part. So it is nothing but El, El Nino. So always whenever Lanina occurs. So this part that is Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. So there we will be having the rainfall. Too much of rainfall will be there. So now this positive it coincides with El Nino. 
okay then come to next the negative so the negative sides so as the negative side is the reverse of the positive so here in the eastern part eastern part of asia we will be having the rising winds and the rainfall is steadying over this and then the same air goes and here in the african and arabian parts so the descending cool air we will be experiencing so this is very coinciding with la nina so because in the la nina again so this area gets major rainfall and here in the peru and other chile coasts so we will be having the descending cold winds so this cycle goes like this okay so remember that is the positive with el nino and negative with the la nina then come to next madan julian oscillation so all these are the telemetries so that means the meteorological events so that is connected to one another so one event is connected to other or maybe one geographical area is connected to other okay so likewise so this happens only when we have a proper wind cycle that is circulating both in the upper and lower surfaces so wherever we have these cycles so we will be having we our own telemetries so madan julian oscillation is another such telemetry so here in the madan julian oscillation although we have one upward flowing wind and the downward flowing wind so this is not fixed to any geographical area so around the equator it keeps on moving circulating so at one point of time it will be here and the other point of time the uh, ascending wind so that comes and falls here so the cycle moves like this so this is a simple concept not so complicated then come to next the role of tibetan plateau and jet streams in monsoons so in this garb we will also discuss how the monsoon actually occurs friends here we have the equator so itcz will almost converge in this area during the normal times but during the uh, monsoon times so whenever monsoon occurs so monsoon will be preceded by the hot summers so here in this area tibetan region we will be having extreme high temperature and low pressure so this will attract this itcz so now this itcz will shift okay so this type and then we have the trade winds that are blowing here and when the itcz shifts so here also we will get the trade winds which are blowing in this direction but at the same time here we will be having somalian jet stream so this somalian jet stream will push the trade wind to the eastwards so thereby we will be getting this monsoon that is the southwest monsoon which comes from the southwest direction like this and now the monsoon will catch up so as and when this low pressure area is present here so the monsoon will keep on coming and now whenever the monsoon is going on so here will be having the jet stream at the tropic of cancer so this jet stream so that is the easterly jet stream that will be pushing this low pressure area into the tibet so that will not be allowing this low pressure area to slide down to the ocean so here again one more jet stream that is the easterly jet stream so that comes into picture and now coming to the winters so that is when northeast monsoon will be in operation so now the itcz will come back to the original position and we will be influenced by these winds the trade winds which are blowing in the northern hemisphere so when this is going on so the air will be flowing from land to ocean so no monsoon will be carried but here with there will be some part of india so that is in the coromandel coast there the air flows from water to the land mass so when that happens so the moisture will be carried and tamil nadu and the other regions so some southern part of andhra pradesh they will get rainfall during this northeast monsoon or during winter seasons okay so now when this is going on one westerly jet stream will be under operation so that will be like this and this jet stream will push this low pressure downwards and here there will be no more low pressure and sometimes when the jet stream is in operation here so it will be coldness but when the cyclones they blow from this mediterranean sea and they pick up the moisture from the caspian sea and they will shed rainfall around the western parts north western parts of india so this is the western disturbances that occurs so here the westerly jet stream and the easterly jet streams with blow during the summer season and also the somalian jet stream so all these are the jet streams which are acting on the indian monsoon and the low pressure ones that is on the tibet so during winters this low pressure will flow towards the ocean and that lies somewhere in this region okay so somewhere below andaman nicobar it comes down okay so this is how the monsoon occurs in brief then come to next integrated watershed management program okay so nowadays due to shortage of water interstate water disputes have been increasing so the only solution for all this is like we have to increase 
the afforestation programs in the catchment area so that we get more and more rainfall in the catchment areas and more and more inlet into the river waters. So here in 1994, Professor Hanumanth Rao, he headed a committee to, to assess the efficacy of drought prone area program and desert development programs. So these were the pet schemes of 1990s. So to assess these, this committee was appointed. Then after this, the integrated watersheds development program and the Nat national watershed development projects for the rain-fed areas. So these two schemes came into picture after this. And then by 2006, the National Rain-Fed Area Authority was established and it was tasked with the preparation of the collating and collection of the technical informations related to the rainfall and precipitation in the watersheds. Okay, so after the collection of information, various programs will be planned like the sinking pits, then growing of plants and stopping deforestation in the water catchment areas. So all those things will be taken up. And then the objectives of watershed management plan, first is the pollution control and then minimizing over exploitation of resources. So it might be the forests or even the river waters, so all these. Then water storage, then flood control, then checking sedimentation inside the river, then wildlife preservation and then erosion control and prevention of soil and recharging groundwater. So this is a comprehensive, it is not like only the geography related, so wildlife and then pollution, so everything is related here and the implementing agencies. So here we have the national level data center and national portal. Okay, so this will be in the central and then in the state, the state level nodal agency will work and then in the district, district watershed development unit will work. Okay, so apart from the others, so these are also the implementing agencies. Then come to next, the seasons in India. So like here we have the winter season. So that is in the mid December to January, February. So December, January, February are the winter seasons. So this is the season where we will be getting the northeast monsoons and these monsoons, they will be stopped by the western disturbances. So whenever the western disturbances come, the cloud formation happens and whenever the cloud forms around us, so we will get some warmer climate. So that is the break for these northeast winds. Then the hot weather season. So once we are done with the winter, then the low pressure zone starts to set on the Tibet region and now excess of heat starts. The whole nation will burn from the soil heat and that is why excess of heat and dryness will be created. That is from March to May. So we all experience that and most of us are experiencing even now. And then the rainy season. So then comes the monsoon. So once the monsoon picks up, so suddenly from June 1st to June 10th, so the monsoon will pick up and it will spread most of the western guards and then slowly it starts spreading to the whole nation. And then we have the season of retreating monsoon. So when the monsoon retreats, okay, so it is like suddenly the water cooling effect will be reduced. So the cooling effect from the monsoon will not be present there. So that results in sudden increasing of heat. So that is called as October heat. Okay, and also weather becomes erratic and sometimes even the cloud bursts can also occur. So that means during Diwali times, the rainfall is common because of this October heat. So these are some of the things for the seasons in India. Then coming to next, the Koipan's climate zones in India. So Koipan has given some of the climate zones. So we begin. So here AMW, AMW means the monsoon type with short dry season. So as the monsoon, it stays here for longer time. So they have only a short dry season here. And then in this part, there is AS. So AS means monsoon with dry season in summer. So we know that winter gets rainfall here due to the Coromandel coast. And that is why the monsoon with dry season in summer. And then here we have BSHW, that means the steppe climate. So here in the Hyderabad, Karnataka region, so the steppe climate will be there. That means some continentality is there because the coasts are far away from here. And then coming to next AW, AW means savanna type. So although they have the continental type, but they are exposed to the coasts here. So that's why, so not the steppe type, but somewhere around savanna type of climate will be there. And then we have the CWG. So CWG means monsoon type with dry winter. So this is the hardcore, the monsoonal climate. So it is like, so complete dryness during March, then the absolute rainfall during July, and then again, winter too much cold. So exactly monsoon type of climate. So that will be experienced by UP, Bihar and some Rajasthan regions. And then here again, the grassland type of climate will occur as we move towards Rajasthan. And then here in the 
Kashmir region and the Uttarakhand Himachal region. So here we experience E type of climate. E, e means it is tundra and polar regions. So we don't have any confusions here. And then and then we have DFC that is cold humid winters and short summers. So summers are short because the Bay of Bengal branch of monsoon will reach early here. And apart from that, so the winters are humid. Okay, so these are some of the uh, climatic conditions regarded by Koypan here. And then come to next, the dam safety bill. So dam safety bill 2019 that was tabled in parliament. And here some of the features that is the national committee on dam safety. So that will be set up. So the chairperson will be the central water commission. So the central water commission's chairperson, he will only be chairing this one. So this is the committee which formulates the policies for the dam safety. And then we have the national dam safety authority. So this is the body which implements the policies formulated by the National Committee on Dam Safety and then the State Dam Safety Organization. So this works under the, the guidelines of the National Dam Safety Authority and that performs the surveillance ins inspection and the monitoring jobs. And then we have the owner's obligations. So whoever owns, whether the central government or state government, whoever owns, so that body which owns, so they should have some obligations that is Every dam should have a dam safety unit so that will inspect the dam again and again and compulsorily they should have emergency action plan and then the risk assessment studies every season. Okay, so in winter then in rainy seasons so inspections and assessments should go on then punishments. So if they obstruct any person from discharging the functions and also if they refuse from complying with the rules so then the punishments can be awarded. Then come to next, the IIT Madras, so they studied that some contaminants were present in Kaveri Basin. So that means so many pharmaceutical companies are present on the banks of Kaveri River and that's why they are polluting. So here, before going to that, we have some of the important places on Kaveri River. So Mekedatu, so this place is controversial between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. So Mekedatu means goat sleep. So here, Karnataka is trying to set up a dam. So we will make sure that. So what is the prospect of that? And then we have Hoganakal Falls. So that is present on Kaveri River and Metur Dam, Metur Dam and KRS Dam, Krishna Raja Sagar Dam. So that is present in Karnataka and Metur Dam is present in Tamil Nadu, but both are present on the Kaveri River. Then we have the Sri Rangam Island and the Grand Anikat. So this Grand Anikat was built by Chola Kings. So this is one historical place. So all these are the important ones to be located on Kaveri River. And Kaveri has several tributaries. So we begin from here. So some of the tributaries are Amaravati here and then the Noyal, then Bhavani and then the Suvarnavati is present here and then the Kabini and then we have the Harangi River and Hemavati River is also there and Hemavati River also has Hemavati Dam and then we have the Krishnaraj Sagar Dam. So that is located exactly here and then we have Arkavati River and then the Metru Dam. So Metru Dam is located somewhere here. So these are some of the ones which are present. So there was a question like which of the following national parks are present on the Kaveri Basin. So UPSC will link one or two subjects likewise. So be careful regarding that. And then distribution of rainfalls in India. So in the last class we discussed how to uh, range the rainfalls for various biomes. So for temperate how much is the rainfall, for tropical how much is the rainfall. So take India as the example. So here we have 0 centimeter to 400. So 400 is mostly the maximum that is the Chirrapunji, Mohs syndrome and other areas. So no area like if you take one full continent or one full country. So they won't get 400 centimeters rainfall anywhere. So 200 even if they get maximum. So most of the rainfall that falls between uh, 0 to 150. So 150 will be the maximum. So here the 400 centimeters rainfall. So that range. So that will be mo mostly in Western Ghats. And then here we have the Northeast. So Meghalaya and some parts of Arunachal Pradesh and also some parts of Assam. So they also get the 400 centimeters rainfall. So after that we have other inner parts. Say for example here the regions of the leeward side of Western Ghats to some extent and also some parts of the Ganga Plains. So here and also some parts of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh region and also the Manipur, Nagaland region. So they also and Mizoram, Tripura region, they have 200 to 400. And then coming to further less, so here the eastern side of UP and Bihar, so and some parts of Jharkhand and also Odisha. So all these, they have some 100 to 200. So if Odisha doesn't get cyclone, so but obvious not so much of rainfall will penetrate deep into Odisha. 
and then some other lesser rainfall areas. So here we have the semi-arid and arid parts of Rajasthan and also in the Leh Ladakh region we get lesser rainfall. Okay. So these are some of the uh, things which we had to discuss and come to the last part. Friends, most of you are texting saying that you are being anxious and the days are crunching and you are almost approaching towards the prelims and all those things. See, one thing is that you get tensed or you get nervous or anxiety because you are worrying more about the results. Okay, So, don't worry about the results that is happened to come after 2 to 3 months. So, worry about today. So, worry about this minute which you are wasting by thinking that one. So, do your duty properly and do your duty sincerely and leave the rest to the God. So, let the God or let the destiny decides what should be your part and what should be your path in life. Okay. So, make sure that you give importance to your efforts, not to the results. So, think about what you give, not what you get from the aftermath of what you are giving. So, do it all the very best. Good luck, friends.